it was a guy of Pandora and he had his whole story um, about like how he had been a student and how he got in the job and at the end of it after describing his job he said by the way my position's hiring and uh, if any of you guys are looking for a job come up talk to me later. Hey, I'm Molly and I'm here with Esme, a senior data analyst at Pandora. Thanks so much for joining us today. You're very welcome. Happy to be here. What was it like learning data science starting from a non-technical background? It was interesting. Um, I had tried for a while because I had been thinking off and on about doing something like data science um, to teach myself code. And I found that, for me at least, I need some level of structure, that I was not very good at just doing it from nothing, without any kind of project or clear application. Even if I had a long-term goal, if I didn't have a medium-term goal, it was hard to get there. Um, so that was a big part of why I chose to do a program like Springboard, so that there would be the structure of goals around me, there'd be somebody I could talk to, the mentor part of the program. It was, it was challenging at first. The stats and the application of information is stuff I had more familiarity with. I took graduate level statistics and biostatistics in grad school, and then of course I did a lot of calculus and statistical mathematics and logic reasoning in undergrad, but the pure coding part, it was like learning a new language. If you've ever done that from scratch, especially one that has a different alphabet, it's just like pulling teeth. Um, I remember some point, a month and a half, two months in, suddenly things clicked and every line of code I wrote was no longer a fight against myself to figure out what I was trying to say. I was trying to be able to think about what I actually needed the thing to do and then I could, if I didn't know the tool off the top of my head, the vocabulary, the language, I could look it up. But before that it was just like every piece was a fight and getting through that barrier was so hard. But once I did, it started to mean something, and the other parts of it that I already had, the other skills that I already had, I could start applying to this new way of talking about it and thinking about it. So um, prior to getting the job at Pandora, you joined us for Springboard Rise in mm -hmm. the fall. Would you mind telling us a little bit about your experience with Rise? It was fun. Um, it was kind of interesting. A lot of the people there were current students, um, but definitely not everybody. I was impressed how many people came from far away. I mean, for me, it's across the bay. I live in Oakland, but um, I met people who'd come from different parts of the country, both as mentors and as students, and a couple other alumni. I remember a couple of the talks that were the very fast talks about like different topics of how you could apply data science and data analytics was really interesting and I really enjoyed that part. And then of course I ended up actually going to a talk that was a alumni talking about his current job. I mean that ended up being a connection that uh, I got, I went up to him and I gave him my card and I talked to him for a few minutes and he said yeah I'd be happy to refer you and when he did I applied immediately. I had everything together. Um, I got the interview and then I ended up getting the job. Um, and I work with them now pretty much every day, which is pretty cool. Wow, what but, a wonderful connection. How cool. Yeah, I've always just thought that was crazy. But like, I assumed when I s saw him later, he was going to be hounded by people. Because obviously everybody there, or a lot of people there, are looking for a job. But for whatever reason, he was not. And I went up to him and said, hey, I'm interested. I think that also just speaks to your level of confidence. And um, I think a lot of the times that can be intimidating for people. So wonderful and commend you on and going up and doing that. Yeah, I know it comes off as confidence. It's more of just at some point in my life I was like, I'm done being letting my nervousness stop me from doing the thing. Um, and then most of the time if you go up and talk to somebody, most people aren't going to shush you away. And if they do, what have you lost? What was the most difficult part of the interview for you going into the job at Pandora? I mean, for the whole process, I think the hardest part for me was just continuing to do it because I did take a while to find the right position. Um, and it, it was definitely like keeping your spirits up and keeping your uh, confidence up the whole way through. And so I had to continue to practice and continue to keep my skills up while also trying to do other work to like freelance work a little bit. I did some freelance science writing work on the side to continue to make money. Um, for Pandora specifically, I think the coding challenge they gave me was definitely not necessarily easy. But in many ways, I feel like I was in the right place to do it because I had just had some very tricky ones for after a few weeks before that with other positions that I did not do as well at, but gave me a chance to really practice some interesting ways of looking at things so that when I got the one with Pandora, I was ready. So let's talk a little bit more about your day-to-day. -day. What is a day in the life for you currently at Pandora? It obviously depends on the day, but largely is breaking down information of what are the ongoing projects that I'm doing or any 
new requests that are coming in from the team around me. I work on the analytics team that's tied to one of the departments. In my instance, it's the finance department. So theoretically, I could be helping anybody from the finance gain information they need to do their work better. Um, but that also means that I have ongoing projects producing dashboards or producing um, a greater understanding for the senior team, theoretically, usually eventually, um, that I could be working on. So it's, it's, it's very self-driven. It's very open depending on day to day. But often I have meetings. Many meetings. <laughs> many meetings. Hopefully not too many. What would you say is the biggest difference for those of us who might not know um, that terminology between a data analyst and a data scientist? It really depends on who's asking you, I think, completely. Because in the field, some career positions seem to use them interchangeably. Um, I interviewed at one point with, I think it was Lyft or Uber, one of those, and they literally like we're so tired of losing amazing data analysts because they go somewhere that gives them the title data scientist that we've changed all the titles. Everyone's a data scientist now. And I was like, okay. Uh, the emphasis in a more realistic way is the depth of information you're going to. A data analyst is going to look for larger, broader connections, I think is a good way to put it. And a data scientist is going to be looking into the, the depth of theory. That is not always used that way, but that's my understanding of the difference. Do you have any tips for students who, similar to you, maybe don't have that tech background and they are just beginning our courses and are feeling a little bit overwhelmed? For me, one thing I found actually really helpful, when, especially when I was having trouble with just the technical part, is my mentor and I set up a once a week check-in where I'd email her. Um, and I could, of course, email her any amount of time, and if she had time, she could respond to me. But it actually meant that I had like a date that was halfway between, I think we talked on Tuesdays, so it was like on Thursday evening or something, that I was forced to send her a little like, this is what I've been doing. But it also then forced me on Thursday to break down where am I stuck, or where am I not stuck, or whatever. So if I had a question, it gave me an outlet to talk to her, and it wasn't once a week that I got a little bit further. Um, and that ended up actually being really, really useful because that's just that little bit more of time. And half the time she'd be like, it's two lines of things that you're just missing. Um, I basically tried to like rewrite, oh, what was it? In my first capstone project, uh, I had done this whole thing and maneuvered all this stuff around. And she's like, yeah, so you're basically trying to rewrite natural language processing and make, make your own version of it. Here's the tools that exist. Um, I was like, this is so much better, but I did no idea. I had no, I didn't know enough to know what to look for. Um, but having that little bit more frequent check-in with her gave me that and feedback just more often enough to make it easier. Well, Esme, it's been so wonderful getting to thank speak you. with you today. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. Glad to be here.